Hello again, this is the Weekly Mac, your only local TV show. We deal with local issues with a global will. And today, we're honored to welcome the conductor of the Orquestra Sinfónica de Barcelona y Nacional de Catalunya, Kazushi Ono, and the great musician and composer, Albert Guinovar. We portray a wonderful soprano at Palau de la Música Catalana. And our face-off between Patricia Scalona and Matthew Tree on an interesting question. Should access to music be completely free? Yes, you're right. Today our main topic is music. So relax and enjoy the Weekly Mac with Marcella Topol. Welcome to a new episode of the Weekly Mac. You've seen our summary. Today we have a few luxury guests. So let's get down to business. And who better to start with than our fellow Irishman, Mark Broderick. Hey Mark, how are you today? How are you? I'm, I'm grand. Ah, you're, you're rubbing my, my yeah, word. Yeah, I've huh? copied you. It's, you uh, like it's it? catching on, it's catching on. Hey, listen, yep. um, this is uh, our sixth program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've come a long way. We have indeed. And uh, today, because it's music, I was feeling a little bit like musically inclined. Really? So I bought a couple of things today to, to show our viewers. Well, at I've home seen you've to... done at least better than last time when you've brought me two potatoes. Yes, mm? I did. You've I come did more indeed. prepared. I have least. indeed. I have mm? indeed. I spent okay. all week. I spent all week buying these, practicing them, and everything. Hold on. Let me. Just... Okay. So oh. can you um, explain me and viewers as well uh, what these instruments are? Sure. This is a traditional Irish whistle. We call it in Ireland a tin whistle. And I had to study this for eight years when I was a child. Really? Yeah, let's, let's see how much I remember, okay? Okay. And this is, uh, let's say, probably the Catalan equivalent. I don't know what it's called. I think it's like a fluviol or something like Flaviol, that. Fluviol? Fluviol or a flau flute, maybe something like that. So I've actually been practicing a little bit. If you want, I can... Uh, yes, yeah? yes, 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 okay, of let's, course. Let's give it a go and see let's what happens. Let's see. Okay. Right. Uh, that didn't right. Really so you go said you've well. studied uh, this instrument for like six or eight years, nine years. Yeah, and that, and this is the result. As you can see, I'm not very musical. Right. You didn't inclined. study too much, did no, you? I wasn't a very good student. Okay, Musical's let's try the other one. Okay, this one I've only been studying for three or four hours. <laughs> uh, so oh my god. Let's see if I do any better. Okay. Uh, okay, well, um, I, I think that's that's enough, right? I think um, I'm, I'm, we should not con we should continue because uh, you know, the exactly viewers the, might turn their TVs yeah, off. Yeah, they might turn it off. I'm not like the Pied Piper of Hamelin, you know, like the. What about singing? Thing. Yeah, actually, you can. Hold on. My father used to sing a song after a few drinks. Okay, let's let's see how it works out. Okay. Well, how do you do, young Willie McBride? Do you mind if I sit down? Here by your graveside. Right, yeah, right, right. Okay, Mark, listen, the, uh, before this show gets into a complete disaster, I hope, um, I do hope that you prepared a nice video for us. I think we should maybe watch it and then we'll see I think later you're right. what happens. I, I, okay. I think you're right, absolutely. <laughs> Let's watch the video. Okay, so today I'm here to summon my inner musical side with a didgeridoo. Let's give it a go. <laughs> it's obvious I'm not musically inclined, so let's go find some people who are. New York, New York. Okay, Miguel, what kind of music do you hate? Uh, well, reggaeton, pop music. Bachata, reggaeton. I don't like uh, the reggaeton. Reggaeton, reggaeton, reggaeton. Because I don't like it, this is not music. I what music do you listen to? A reggaeton too. What kind of music do you listen to in the shower? Um, Latin American music, like reggaeton. Merengue. So you're a reggaeton fan? Yeah. <laughs> We have very, very root music from Venezuela, from uh, Cuba, from Chile that is very good. But now they're taking like a general view, like reggaeton is the music from Latin America. That's the thing. Do you like music? We're, we're like stuck in that, you know, stuck and the people need to listen to better music. 
Baby, please don't go and leave me here. Baby, please don't go. Hey, Billy, where are you from? I am from New York. Uh, can you sing? No. I implore all the artists of Catalonia, find your local English school right now. Go there and learn to speak English, because you're singing in English very well. But you're not speaking in English, and you don't have the confidence to get out there. Do you rock out in the shower like this? Like It's private. <laughs> <laughs> I sing most of the time in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, she knows. She... Yeah, he has a strong voice, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> Faster lovent, this so weird, fears and door. <laughs> Tell me, what kind of music were playing when you conceived, Marty? Jack Jones, oh, what, no, when I conceived Marty, uh, there was no music, I think. <laughs> I want to be very clear that there's a train behind me. And... What kind of music did your parents force you to listen to as a child? Well, actually, my father forced me to, li to listen to the Romanian typical music. You have any... I have to jump a lot. You have to jump a lot? Okay, awesome. There is music for every time of the day. There's music to eat to, there's music to make love to, there's music to run to, there's music to do drugs to, there's music for everything. What music do you make love to? R. Kelly. The remix to Ignition. If you don't know it, YouTube it right now. I know that's kind of a controversial answer because R. Kelly had his own problems with sex, but R. Kelly remix to Ignition. I'm, I'm very promiscuous. I was music. Promiscuous. <laughs> There's at least two or three people watching that know that I'm being truthful right now. We don't get through the whole song, of course. The song's like two and a half minutes, but at least we get the beginning, you know? seems that everybody loves singing in the shower. The majority of the people hate reggaeton. And I'm gonna find that R. Kelly CD because I got a special night plan. You're not very good, uh, I'm sorry to say that, at playing instruments maybe or singing, but uh, no. I see you have a gift for acting a bit like a clown. That's very true. <laughs> and there's, some, there's something I wanted to clear up first. I don't think it's understood by the video why people were saying reggaeton all the time. I asked... The, yeah, what's, what's the thing with reggaeton? Because Everybody I... was like talking about it, right? Yeah, I know, it's crazy. I asked them what music they didn't like. So mm. it was pretty much consensus from everybody on the street that reggaeton was definitely not their favorite, apart from one or two, actually, which I must mention. Well, tell me about the instrument you're playing. Ah, the didgeridoo. The didgeridoo is a tradition... How do we call it? A didgeridoo. 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 Oh, like, that's, uh... Interesting. Did, did I you, did you do today? something last week? No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> didgeridoo. A didgeridoo is like this right. traditional uh, Aboriginal Australian instrument that I was fascinated with. It's so difficult to play. Yeah, I could see that. It's much better if you smoke something out of it or probably something like that. But no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, okay. also, Where were you, by the way? Uh, I was in Badalona. I found that there mm -hmm. a lot of musically nice talented place. people there. Exactly, yeah, it was very cool. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what else did you uh, find out talking uh, with uh, these lovely people in, in uh, Badalona? Did you maybe find out um, a hidden talent? A hidden talent? Uh, there was one kid on the street who had the harmonica, which was, which was pretty cool. Yeah, and also, great. And I was fascinated by the, the Romanian girl who said that, I know that you're from there yourself, she said that Romanians, all they do when they dance is jump. Is that true? Well, I think she was exaggerating a bit. Well, okay, so talk, talking about jumping around and talking about like uh, dancing, music, whatever, let's compare Irish dancing, flamenco, and sardanas. Okay. I'm going to give you a Good little. Idea, let's see if my dancing is a little bit better. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Are you going to dance? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Why not? Okay. So, the Irish I'm, when I'm they sitting dance. Sitting down at least. It's yeah. Okay. You can sit there. <laughs> so, the Irish when they dance. Okay. The top half of the body stays still. This is something move. you need to explain. Okay. Then they move like this. Flamenco. Right. They move like this. It's pretty much the same thing. And the sardanas is like this. Okay. It's like they're hanging clothes on a on a clothesline. <laughs> okay, let's sit down better, Sorry. right? I'm not sure, uh, I think you need to go to uh, dancing uh, classes maybe if you want, I can join you. Dancing? Said, uh, uh, we uh, jump a lot. If the weekly mag pays for it, I'm there, no problem. Well, we'll see about <laughs> it, let's discuss this issue later, but first I have a question for you. Sure. Why do you guys 
never or almost never move your arms when you dance. I mean, the upper part is very rigid and your legs move amazingly fast. So can you give me an explanation for that? Because I think it's a bit uh, weird, right? Catholic Church. <laughs> The Catholic, the Catholic Church have Church. done a big d number on us. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like we have, we're so uh, uh, like solid and, and not, we don't like to move too much. Like we're very kind of, uh, f from the outside, we look very educated and very like rigid and that. And I guess that the movement of the feet is, is like us running away, you know? Uh, I'm not very convinced by this explanation. What about the Can flamenco? Can you give me a proper one? No, really, I mean, honestly, why okay. do you guys keep your uh, arms rigid when you dance? Uh, you know what I heard or what I what? read, okay, actually? Okay, get me what you said. Um, it seems, it looks like when, uh, when this uh, dance, traditional Irish dance, uh -huh. uh, when it became popular, right, it was basically, um, uh, this activity was basically done in pubs. There weren't, there was not a lot of space, right, uh -huh. and people used to, dance on uh, you know on the top of the table or even barrels so because of the lack of space this could be you know i think a reasonable a reasonable uh, explanation i don't what think do you i think? need to come here anymore i think <laughs> you're doing my job for me this is wonderful actually you know what that makes well, absolute anyway. perfect that makes absolute perfect sense have yeah, you ever been to, have you ever been to an irish bar yes sure have you ever seen the progression from the beginning of the evening till the end of the evening in an irish bar obviously after like 10 or 15 pints no, no space at all it, Everybody right. just starts off very like relaxed, like what we talked about before, no? But the music kind of gets inside their soul, no? They start moving, and I guess you're right, no? There's so many of them in the bar that they have to kind of like move their legs around in order to run to the bar and back, you know? Well, yeah, that's possible. So the voice, you said yeah. uh, to me before that the voice was uh, invented by Irish? It's originally an Irish program that was sold abroad. Now, the voice is, uh, you know the concept of the voice, right? They have these three people, people come up and sing on stage, and they press a button and turn around and they see who's singing. I think I know where it comes from. Yep. Let's see. When I was 12 years of age, right, mm -hmm. we had a singing competition at school, right? And we all got all excited about it. We're like, okay, everybody had to go against each other. And the priest and the headmaster of the school had to pick a winner. And we all thought this was wonderful, you know? Like, I think this was the original beginning of, this, of these musical competitions, no? I actually won. Hmm? Yep, Good. when I was 12, well I had to sing, but it wasn't really like a prize. <laughs> I had to sing in front of the church. I had to sing for the confirmation in front of everybody. They kind of tricked me, but I think it came from there. Okay, again, I'm not convinced. <laughs> Listen, I'll see you next time. But I think to see you. something very important. I think people today have seen the difference between the different instruments. I think we've shown that's, them different. So that's true. I've done part of that's, my work. That's positive, yes. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank no you problem. very much. See you next week. All right. And now, what about some tips? Let's learn some fun expressions related to music from our teacher, Tim Guinea. Today, we're talking about music idioms. And an idiom is a phrase that has a different meaning to each literal meaning of the words within it. So our first idiom is to be as fit as a fiddle. Now, a fiddle is a violin, but this has nothing to do with music. If you're as fit as a fiddle, you're very fit and healthy. For example, Peter, he's 60, but he's as fit as a fiddle. He's going to run a marathon on the weekend. Another expression we have with fiddles is to play second fiddle. Now this does come from music. It's originally from the orchestra, but today we use it in all parts of our lives. For example, at work, I know I'm second fiddle to some of my colleagues. That means I'm less valued or less important than them. However, let's imagine that you work as a fashion designer and you wanna make your designs very interesting. We use an idiom to jazz it up. So let's say you've jazzed your designs up and people love it. You get lots of praise and it's music to your ears. Now, that's an idiom that means you love hearing it. But of course, fashion isn't always positive praise. Sometimes you get negative feedback as well. So you have to face the music. So when you do your something or your actions have negative consequences, you need to face the music. Now, sticking with fashion for a minute, sometimes we use an expression to hit the wrong note. Now, 
Imagine you've worn a very colorful dress to a funeral. A bit inappropriate, right? If you hit the wrong note, you do something that's inappropriate and not really accepted. Now, our final idiom of the day is as clean as a whistle. This means very clean. Now, I'm not sure where this came from and who decided that a whistle was very clean. Maybe they sound nice and clear. But I know from my experience that my high school sports coach, his whistle wasn't very clean at all. So maybe if they heard that whistle, the expression would have been as dirty as a whistle. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Today, we are really lucky to have with us two of the greatest maestros of our country. One of them was born in Japan, the other in Barcelona. However, both communicate in the same language, music. The words in the following glossary are also related to it. Stay tuned, they might help you to follow the conversation. Our guests today are a composer and a conductor, so let's first see the different roles they have. A composer is a person who writes music, especially classical music. On the other hand, the conductor is the person who stands in front of an orchestra or choir and directs its performance. However, Maestro Ono is also a musical director. That means he's the artistic leader of the orchestra. He, therefore, does not only conduct concerts but also controls what music will the orchestra perform or record and has much authority regarding personal decisions over the orchestra's musicians. The third word you need to pay attention to is scale. In music, a scale is a fixed sequence of ascending or descending musical notes which begins at a particular note. And last but as usual, not least, chord. A chord is a number of three or more musical notes played or sung at the same time with a pleasing effect. It is a real pleasure to receive on the Weekly Mag two people who have devoted their lives to music. Today is the first time they meet, so this will be a great and special occasion and who knows, maybe also the beginning of something different and important. Albert Ginovart, welcome to the show. Kazushi Ono, welcome to the Weekly Mag as well. Albert Ginovart, you are a pianist and a composer, among other important merits. Kazushi Ono, maestro. Uh, ono, your conductor and uh, music director of the OBC, L'Orchestra Sinfonica de Barcelona in Nacional de Catalunya. My first question is for both of you. When you actually decide to devote your lives to music? Well, I started, uh, I discovered music uh, through, uh, through the piano of my neighbors at, at four. Then I started to play, uh, just play with the music. And when I finished my studies, I decided uh, if going to the university or continue my studies of piano. So I decided to, to move to London, and where I studied with a, a guru of the pedagogic in the piano mastery, that is Maria Curcio. And since right. then, uh, all my life is, is, is dedicated to music. What about uh, yourself, uh, Maestro? <coughs> yes, um, and the first time when I I have heard the music um, was and when I, I was um, um, three years old, about okay, and then uh, um, my parents and then brought me um, the um, third symphony of recording of the uh, third symphony of Beethoven, Eroica symphony, and then I still remember the first uh, very big um, uh, accords. Tan, tan, is still living in my ears, you know. And then that's, that's the first time, really first time for me to have um, heard the music and also uh, with music I used to dance uh, with, with the music with chopsticks um, uh, in my hand. This was the first meeting um, to, to move with music. Okay, um, that's a very early age, I think. Um, this is a coincidence no, that both of you um, have uh, uh, become fascinated with music, uh, four and uh, three years uh, old. Maestro Ono, you first uh, came to Barcelona in 2003 to conduct an opera at the Liceo. Which was your first impression of the city? Um, I remember very well and, uh, when I have, uh, I have conducted um, one um, opera composed by the um, uh, Belgian composer. 
And then uh, it, it was an opera based on the uh, winter tale of Shakespeare. And um, at that time, and uh, I have seen uh, so plenty of the uh, people in, uh, at the uh, opera. And then uh, they, after the show, um, uh, it was so amazing. And then uh, they were so enthusiastic. And then uh, I thought that then, uh, okay, this city is and uh, um, have a very, um, very profound uh, connection to the music. What impressed you most about the city? Um, I I have um, uh, read um, about um, Montserrat and uh, Gaudi, of course, and the Miro, and so on, so on, and. Um, uh, several uh, musicians, the Catalan musicians whom I know. And then um, um, for me, uh, um, my um, recognition of uh, the city and uh, Barcelona is really um, uh, uh, binding uh, with uh, culture. Albert, um, you played in theaters all over the world. Um, tell us if you've ever been to um, Japan. Yes, many years ago I, I went to Tokyo, just Tokyo, to play. Uh, in those days I was accompanying Victoria de Los Angeles. Wow, so impressive. Many, yes, very impressive. <laughs> and I, I was fascinated by, by, the, by the city also. And I must say that I have been in both performances, in Liceo uh, of, <laughs> of Kasushi and also the presentation of OBC with the uh, Requiem for Air. So, <laughs> Very well, nice. you haven't met personally, but you um, uh, know uh, my store owners yes, uh, so work nice. very well. Well, um, what's the main difference, would you say, between um, uh, musical traditions in uh, Japan and uh, Catalonia? Um, well, um, in Japan, and uh, so many um, young uh, people uh, are learning piano or violins and uh, uh, from uh, their childhood, and then uh, there are so many, um, many uh, uh, youth orchestras, amateur youth orchestras, or even in the university uh, orchestras, and then choir, uh, and also amateur pianists. I think, um, generally speaking, um, the um, connection uh, to the music, to the uh, people and uh, citizens of uh, Barcelona or Catalonia is um, more wide scale. Wide scale. I, I, think, and then, I think and then, uh, the individual, um, each person and has something uh, uh, very good connection to the music. This is my impression. Do you agree, Albert? Yes. Sensibility about music, I think it's quite uh, it's quite compar comparable. For instance, we have in, in Barcelona many uh, Japanese students also learning Spanish music because there is a, um, there is a, a big um, love for, for Spanish music, Albanese, Granada, and all that. Well, since we have here with us today uh, a composer and a conductor, I would like to ask you about the collaboration between, um, uh, between composers and conductors. What kind of, of collaboration and, and uh, which is, um, how do you see your, your role? When you, because you need to work together, obviously. So how does it go? I guess it depends on the conductor and it depends on the composer. I see, uh, of course. Usually we have um, commissions of the orchestras, of operas, whatever, and then um, you work at, at the end of, of, of the process of creation with the, with the conductor so, so that he, he can, you can tell him what, what is your idea about music. But I always uh, trust on the, on, the, on the conductor or, or in the music, musician who's going to premiere your music because I, as a composer I always think that you start the creation but who finishes this creation is the, the interpreter. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yes. Do you agree? Um, my yes, son? yes. And uh, from my side, and um, I would like to say that and I'm very, very happy to work with uh, um, living composer, composers. Um, because after the um, composition has been finished, 
and then uh, I will st and I study the score. But on, uh, always on, uh, uh, there are um, some questions um, about the music, about the score. But if this composition has been um, composed by Brahms or Debussy, you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot call them, you know. <laughs> of course, <laughs> to, right. To ask mm. um, for something. But uh, if I would and play on the piece of an Alberto, and then I can easily call him and then asking or me together and then yes. asking of course uh, wh wh what's the meaning of the, uh, this point and, and so on so on. which makes this a difference a, yeah this is a big advantage for for us we'll continue to talk about uh, uh, music with Alberto Novart and uh, Maestro Ono in a few minutes but first let's have a break we are leaving you with a quote by the great American composer Leonard Bernstein author of the famous musical West Side Story among many other great works. Precisely this 2018, we celebrate his 100th birth anniversary. Stay tuned. Well, here we are again. Today our main topic is music and we are talking about it with two very special guests. The conductor of the Orchestra Ciudad de Barcelona y Nacional de Catalunya, Kazushi Ono, and the composer Albert uh, Guinovar. Albert, I would like to talk to you about your uh, latest album, which we've got here, called uh, Nocturne. So, uh, uh, it includes piano works, your composition. All piano work, yes. yes. So tell us, uh, tell us about uh, this album and what it means for your career. Well, uh, I, I've recorded many CDs in the past with Harmonia Mundi, with DECA, with EMI, uh, of repertoire, but not, uh, not a CD of my music played by me. So um, with Sony, I started a collaboration three years ago where I presented two of my piano concertos that I recorded in St. Petersburg. Okay. And, and I completed the CD with my, my waltzes for piano, and, and they, they, um, people liked very much the, and, critis, and critics about these uh, piano pieces. So we thought that it would be a good idea to do just a, a, a piano CD of my, of my pieces. And there are, they are um, small pieces, nocturnes, um, or other pieces that are very intimate. That's why the, the, the title is Nocturne, because I think that it's, it's a, a CD that you can hear profoundly, I mean, with attention, but you can, all, you can also listen when you are, you're, you're having a, a meeting. So it's, it's very calm and very relaxing. Uh, talking about this, uh, this album, uh, you said in an interview that uh, um, in one occasion you felt like you were a pop uh, musician. Can you tell us why? Uh, yes. Well, uh, I started m my career as a pianist because uh, the, the academic surrounding um, didn't like me. Uh, um, I didn't like, we, we didn't like each other. Right. <laughs> because because I, I am, as a, as a pianist, all the music I like is, is the big repertoire of piano, so it's romanticism, even the, the French music, but not the, the vanguardist or, or more the, this um, um, experimentation music. So I started the, this way of, of piano of, as, a, as a pianist. But then I had the chance to do my first uh, big success that it was Maricel, exactly. the, the, the musical. So ma many people associated uh, me to pop or to popular music because it, it became very popular. But I, my, my, and then all my work, Gaudi, no? and, yes, Gaudi, uh, and other, <laughs> other hits, Caramouche, right. but I have also composed um, uh, symphonic music, uh, operas. So, but but as this popular side of me is very is very known in Catalonia. That's why. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would like to ask you about uh, requiems. 
Uh, right, um, uh, Mr. Ono, or Maestro Ono, in 2015, you made your presentation as the conductor of the OBC with the Requiem, that of Foray. And uh, Albert, you also presented um, a Requiem written by uh, yourself uh, last January. What is this uh, about this um, musical form that, uh, that appeals to you uh, that much? Hmm. <clears throat> um... It depends on the uh, composers and uh, which um, style and uh, uh, their own uh, requiem has. And um, for example, Fauré requiem is um, a direct conversation with 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 the heaven. Yeah, and then uh, uh, any uh, uh, sound or any uh, single notes. Uh, uh, very, very well connected to the uh, correspondence um, between us, between us um, as a human being who have the, uh, um, certain limitation to exist and uh, something beyond that uh, gives us the uh, possible um, uh, eternal life. In, in our, in our uh, limitation or uh, beyond the, uh, our limitation. This Excellent. is the uh, structure and then the thoughts of Fauré Requiem or Brahms Requiem. <coughs> Brahms Requiem. And, uh, this is the Requiem for the living human being and consolate us. And then, uh, uh, of course, and then there, there is also the conversation then between uh, beyond and then uh, uh, our existence. But uh, mainly, uh, the things um, Brahms has uh, written down is the message to living we. You know, yeah. living uh, uh, human beings. Human beings. They yeah. are very different indeed. In your case, Albert, your requiem uh, is also different, but you're not a religious person. Actually, you said once that your religion is music. So exactly. tell us, uh, what is special about your requiem? Well, I'm not a religious um, a pra a practicant, but if, I think that if you are a musician, you have a connection with mystic, with something superior that, that has connection with many religions. In the other hand, uh, Latin, to put music on Latin words, are very um, flexible for musicians that we can do many things. Um, this is my third religious work after a mass and, uh, and a te deum. So, but this is because uh, the re my residence in the Palau this year, they, it, it was a commission and I thought, do you really think I should write a requiem because I, I'm being, I've been associated more to happy music? And they said that they were interested about my, my vision. And I thought that after, as Maestro said, if you, if you see the Forer, Mozart, Verdi, uh, Dürufle, all the requiems, they have different visions about the, this transcendent moment. So I thought that um, my vision was about if you live uh, a nice life, the, the last um, etapa, uh, the last, um, well, yes, the last, <laughs> the end of your life, you can be grateful to this. So it goes like a, 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 um, a chant of, of happiness and to, uh, to thank to the life uh, what, what, uh, all your experiences. But of course, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a long life, uh, you can say that. <laughs> of course, a very different requiem indeed. And I'd like to ask um, Maestro on about uh, the OBC, uh, about um, your main uh, objectives uh, for um, uh, this season, and also if you can tell us a few highlights uh, of the okay. season in um, In the next season, um, uh, we open the season um, with the um, uh, Fifth Symphony of Mahler, and then the composer Mahler um, uh, I put all uh, in every season, and then uh, this is the fourth uh, time, and then uh, this time uh, with the fifth symphony, and uh, we shall open the season. 
and then um, um, Brahms series, Brahms symphonies series, and then uh, uh, the special um, uh, theme of the uh, seasons. Um, I think always that the um, um, kind of um, devotion of um, the music to uh, uh, construct the um, sound like a mountain uh, to connect the beyond, okay, beyond world. And then uh, uh, this uh, next season, and um, because of the uh, Japan tour, uh, we shall do um, um, uh, the ninth, ninth Symphony of Beethoven too, and uh, Turandot, the, the opera, in, in the concert form in, in Barcelona. And then uh, both of um, uh, pieces, and then also the Mahler Symphony and the Brahms Symphonies, um, we shall have a, a certain message uh, to the audience and uh, um, listen to that uh, kind of music uh, to um, image um, yourself that uh, you would be uh, going up, going up and up, 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 up. Uh, Maestro Ono, uh, what kind of conductor do you consider uh, yourself to be and how much of a nectar are you? Because you need um, uh, a, good, um, a, part, a good part of uh, conducting as well as is acting, right? Yeah. Um, when I have um, studied in Munich, um, I have um, mm, I have played um, piano um, as a repetitor and uh, in the uh, Barbarian, Barbarian State Opera. And then at that period, in the mid um, 80s and 1980s, um, the music director of that uh, opera was uh, Wolfgang Savarich, a very um, uh, great uh, conductor. And then uh, the uh, music director of the Philharmonie of Munich was a uh, very famous um, uh, Serge Cherbidake. And then uh, I have seen and, uh, uh, such giants of the music, and then I was um, influenced very, very much. And then uh, uh, I used to, you know, um, imitate their, you know, um, uh, movements. But uh, but uh, finally, um, uh, this is of course and uh, like that. But uh, um, you s you should find out um, your um, internal um, depth uh, from which uh, your uh, interpretation or in your um, thoughts on, on the music and uh, can be uh, delivered to the people. See. Yeah. Well, we're talking about music today with uh, composer Albert Novart and Maestro uh, Kazushi Ono. We've been talking about music, but why don't we listen to some music as well? And I would like to uh, invite you, Albert, to play something for us today. With pleasure. What are you going to play? I'll play um, a, 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 one of my nocturnes, but, but just the beginning, because I you know with television it's, it's too long. <laughs> I see. Well, let's listen to some uh, piano music now. Springtime is flower time and we're going to interview one of the participants in the most important floral event in the country, Dims the Flosh.
Albert, uh, congratulations for your wonderful uh, piece of music. We've just listened to uh, Nocturne à Chloé, uh, a piece from your uh, latest album, uh, Nocturne. Um, Thank you very Albert, much. And I would like to take this opportunity to ask you to teach us a quick lesson of music for those of us, um, uh, myself and viewers, uh, maybe as well, who uh, would like to understand music better. So uh, I would like to start with three basic concepts of music, uh, rhythm, melody and harmony. Well, rhythm, that's easier to understand for most of us, but what's the difference between uh, melody and harmony? Well, melody uh, is, the, is the basic line you, that, that singers sing, or popular songs or whatever. So it's, it's just one line. Right. Uh, I can show, for instance, this in, this, in another yes, nocturne please. of mine, if I place just the melodies, Then if I, if I play the harmony, so the chords, the, the accompaniment, that it could be this. And I play the melody over that. So the harmony is something that the, the musicians have um, added to this basic line to wave, wave, yeah. wave and the light and shadow. Mm -hmm. yeah. The light difference is uh, quite uh, significant indeed. Well, let's go to, uh, to the next question. I'd like to talk about major and minor tonalities. This is a question for Maestro Kazushi. What's the difference between the two? Okay, then I'll yeah. show you <laughs> then some Thank you. example. Um, the major scale is um, a very representative one. Is Very positive, and then uh, very um, high tension, and then I um, play uh, Mozart sonata and uh, by okay. C major. Major, and then minor is um, a little bit different. A little bit sad and then uh, emotional. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah? Well, and now then, I uh, see the difference. Yeah, Mozart and uh, Sonata also. This was a sonata when uh, uh, the mother of Mozart um, died. Yeah, and then that, uh, that's uh, reflected on uh, on the tonality. Yeah, They're a little bit sad and then uh, emotional. Of course. And um, this is a um, so-called um, um, occidental occidental uh, scale. And then uh, instead the um, oriental scale, a little bit different. This is um, one of the scales of um, Indian music. And then the Japanese um, uh, uh, scale is... And then uh, both of them um, uh, oriental uh, scale um, uh, consists of five sounds, five tunes. A little bit shorter than the uh, occidental one. Yeah? And then I uh, play one uh, famous song in, in, of Japan. Sounds brilliant. Well, I feel really privileged 
to um, enjoy this wonderful uh, music lesson with uh, Maestro Ono and Albert. You know, Bart, Albert, please uh, join us. Yes. You can uh, have a seat with, uh, with uh, yes, Maestro yes. Ono. You can sit together if you want. And I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, the counterpoint. Let's continue, ah, okay. Let's continue the, the, the well, lesson. Counterpoint I can't show with the same nocturne as played. I played before the melody and the harmony. That counterpoint is something that you added um, as a dialogue, dialogue with the melody. So it's like, it's not just a singer and a piano accompanying, so like this. The singer is here, the company is here, but you add another singer. So, uh, for instance, the second time that it appears the, the melody, it's, you, you will hear two melodies at the same time. The, the master of this um, discipline, of course, you know Bach was the the master of master. Yes, point. the king of counterpoint. The king of uh, yes. the uh, counterpoint. How do you recognize uh, musicians, other musicians, uh, in this case? How do you detect the differences between uh, each performer? Well. Um. Okay. That's a difficult For example, question. Um, um, maybe um, we shall play the same piece. Maybe, ah, good. maybe. W yes. w which piece? And, uh, um, I don't know. Um, Let's improvise. Mm, yes. The sonata. Sonata. Wh whatever you like. Mm. Ah, scherzo. You, you can. You yeah. Can play? Yeah. <laughs> This is my tempo, okay? Right. Then, Alberto? <laughs> well, it's more or less the same, <laughs> but the... But for instance, I can, I can um, uh, play um, softer or, or harder the, the um, left hand. Left hand, yeah. This is the, this, or, or for instance, um, in this uh, same schedule, when, when it sings... For instance, I can I can do um, the bass line uh, softer, or so th you can you can see the difference between tempo, but also the the different lines that yeah. th that you want to show. So this uh, piece of music that, that we just listened to um, uh, is a sonata. Well, this by is the second this is a scherzo. scherzo, second scherzo of Chopin. Chopin. Okay, I see. <laughs> well, uh, please have a seat uh, again. <laughs> Make yourselves uh, comfortable. Uh, comfortable because uh, before we go, I would like to ask you both uh, some brief questions to get to know uh, your personal taste is a little bit better. For example, which composer do you feel a special connection with? Uh, a composer that influenced you a lot in your career? For me, as a conductor, um, um, I have um, learned a lot um, from Wagner. Verdi and then Mahler. I see. Brahms, Debussy. Okay. Shostakovich, Prokofiev. And you all back? Many. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, as a pianist, uh, maybe what, what I prefer to play is Chopin, but also Schumann, Debussy, Ravel. But uh, generally speaking, uh, Mozart is my, is my ideal. As a, as a composer, as a music, because he always uh, look, looks for beauty. Even if it's a, dram it's a drama, like Don Giovanni, it's always um, beautiful. That is what, uh, what I, I like very much. And in the, in the 20th century, not, the, um, not some of them, but for instance, I, I, I like very much Poulenc, uh, Prokofiev, uh, Gershwin, and Bernstein. So you, we have. We are very lucky, the musicians, because we have uh, something that we, we cannot finish. 
And um, one last question before we go. Apart from classical music, what other musical styles uh, do you like uh, listening to? I like, for instance, the beginning of musicals in, in the States, like Gershwin, Cole Porter, Jerome Kern, all this, uh, this kind of music that is, is composed by a composer. Uh, I don't like so much the, the pop that is composed um, in, <laughs> in, in group. I like the, the beauty of, uh, of writing the music, so, so, but, but I, I listen funky, I listen anything, B but in different occasions. For instance, um, if you want to listen Brahms, I think that you have to concentrate. You cannot put, we are, when you are doing something at home, you have to be concentrated. In, in the other hand, if you put pop or funky, you can do many things at home. No? I so see. <laughs> What about yourself, Maestro? Um, I hear a um, um, Gregorian chant, Gregorian chant, and uh, as a you know the base of the classical music, and also um, uh, I uh, I love to sing a Japanese folk song, and uh, also um, jazz music, jazz, and I like very much jazz. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds great. Well, uh, I'm afraid uh, we need to conclude here. Uh, thank you so much for, for your presence today. It's been a, a great um, occasion for me to, to listen to, to great uh, musicians. But uh, before uh, we go, I would like to invite Maestro Ono to uh, play something for us. It will be a great honor if you accept it to, uh, uh, to perform. What are you going to, uh, uh, to maybe, perform? Maybe... Um Rodolfo Aria um, from La Boheme um, of Puccini. Okay. okay, thank you very much. As today's topic is music, let's have a look at some expressions related to that. Maybe you're a musician and you can play an instrument while reading the music, or maybe you can play by ear. To play by ear means that you can listen to a song and then play it without having to read any notation at all. Now, different music affects people in different ways, depending on your tastes. Maybe you're listening to a song and you say, that sounds great, you really like it and you're enjoying it. Or the opposite, 
Maybe that sounds awful. It's terrible and you want it to stop. Maybe you're listening to the worst music you've ever heard. You want to exaggerate. You could say, it makes my ears bleed. Now, obviously this isn't literal, but you're saying this is terrible or maybe you think that they have no talent whatsoever. Sometimes you listen to a song and it sticks in your memory for a while. For this we say, that's catchy. It's often used to describe pop music. And then sometimes you listen to a song and it sticks in your head for a long time, days, weeks, maybe even longer. This we call an earworm, as if it's called into my ear, it's in my brain and it won't leave. <laughs> maybe you're listening to a song, you find yourself tapping your foot along to the beat. We say you are beating time. A conductor beats time to tell the orchestra how fast or slow they should be playing. Maybe you're listening to your favourite music ever and you dance all night until your body can't dance anymore. We say you dance till you drop, usually used to describe clubbing or parties. Lastly, we have a phrase to describe when someone is repeating themselves over and over to sound like a broken record. So they're explaining and explaining to the point where it's annoying and boring. <laughs> so at risk of sounding like a broken record myself, I better say goodbye. Thank you. Today, our Home From Home features a soprano. Her name is Michelle Francis Cook and she currently lives in Terrassa. However, her special place, the one that has stolen her heart, is the Palau de la Musica Catalana. We talked to her about her experience as a singer in this wonderful auditorium. Check it out. husband was a, a, a musician but I was working in, in nursing but uh, we discovered that I had a voice uh, a little bit of an opera singer's voice and I decided why not get training and from that in, within five years I was already singing opera it was a very quick process suddenly I was from an, a simple nurse uh, and uh, they sent me to Europe to study opera I decided to come to Barcelona because I was offered a contract in the Liceo uh, to do some small things and uh, it became a large thing in my life and I just loved Barcelona and decided this is where I want to live. I came into the Palau de la Musica and I saw this most ornate theatre. I've never seen anything like it in, in, in Melbourne and I fell in love with the architectural, the Barcelona style in, of the architecture of this theatre as well as the acoustics. I said, oh, I, when I first came and visited this, I said, I will love to sing here. And my dream came true in 2006. A year and a half after arriving, I was asked to sing Strauss with the Liceo University Orchestra on this very stage. beautiful culture and, and, and beautiful um, concepts. Little details of the, the, the symbols, which are very much Catalan. Also the, the, the symbols of the statues that are around the front of the theater, the, the symbolic of, of, of the muses. I just, I find it very fascinating, not only to sit here in the audience, but as a, a performing, it's just so inspiring. It just honors the musician, it's fantastic light of this theatre. You don't have theatres with much light. Here, as you can see, this beautiful sunlight streaming in. In Australia, we talk about the Litheo as one of the top theatres of the world. So, but coming here is, is more intimate. I think it's a, it was my experience was a very intimate re, re thing with the audience the first time I've sung here. And last year, I had the pleasure of singing Carmen in the opera that they have uh, in the Palau, and I just love it. It's, the, the people are so, there's such a warm um, ambience from the audience as well. Should you be able to download all music for free? 
Matthew Tree and Patricia Scalona are about to discuss it. Spring is a time for flowers, so we thought we'd dedicate a part of the show to one of the biggest flower events in the country, Thames the Floss in Girona. For a little more than a week from tomorrow until the 20th of the month, the city gets dressed up with amazing floral exhibitions. And today we have invited one of the members of the Association Amix de las Flores, which participates in this event, Carla Burg. Thank you for Hello. coming. Thank you. Well, let's see, what is Thames de Flores and what uh, does it represent for the city of Girona? Well, uh, Thames de Flores is the most important event of the city um, for its affluence. We are talking about more than 250,000 people who's coming. That's quite a lot. Yes, because the city is not so huge, so it's so important that. Also, it's important because of the involvement of our volunteers. Okay, so it's called for us, it's called the Festival of Illusion, because all of us are volunteers who work together for that, for that event. Yeah. Well, illusion, no? like excitement yes. and joy, yes. right? Yes, yeah, totally. Well, uh, this year you celebrate the 63rd edition. Um, how did it start? Well, it started all in 1954. Um, it was a, a period with a lot of changes in this country. And there was a woman who was called Maria Cubarsi. Um, she, with other women, um, presented their plants or the flowers they've been taking care during all the year all the right. years mm -hmm. well she's actually very well uh, known in uh, Girona mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so um, after that day every year in the month of May they repeated that 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 exhibition until now that we have thousands of people involved and everything is going and improving more it's, and, and it's more. it's growing, right? Actually, yeah. um, I would like to know how has it changed and evolved over the years? Yes, at, it's important to say that at the beginning um, it was all financed by the volunteers, all designed, financed by the volunteers. Uh, in 1992, the City Hall started with its, its support, so right. it gave us a big impulse for the Big, exp um, big expansion it has had during all these years. Like it has um, evolved, it has developed and it has grown. Let's yes. talk about this year. We are talking about Thames the Floss, which uh, starts tomorrow in Girona. Yeah. It will uh, run until the uh, 20th of the month. Uh, Carla, tell us which are the main um, innovations for this year? Because every year uh, you yes. come up with something different and new, yes. right? Yes, we, we try every year to have something new to offer to our, to our visitors. For example, this year, um, Color Yellow will be the protagonist of, of the event. We have different spaces where you could see that. We will, in the um, Eiffel Bridge, for example, there will be a big flower in yellow. Also this year, we will have um, a big space in an emblematic street the Ciutadans Street. Okay, all the balconies are going to be decorated also with yellow. So yellow will be the protagonist. Yeah, uh, for sure this the year. This year, this year for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Carla, tell me. Um, let's talk about numbers. Last year there were almost 200 projects distributed in more than 150 different venues. What about this year? How many projects are we talking about, and how many venues? Yeah, we are talking about uh, 146 uh, spaces with 192 um, projects, okay? Right. Um, for example, a big project this year will be the cathedral, the stairs of the cathedral. We have uh, an artist who is coming, it's um, Jordi Villa. So he will make a, a spectacular um, and magic um, performance, Project, right? yeah, sure. Well, uh, there are always a lot of um, expectations, yeah. right? Uh, referring to the, the, the cathedral, uh, yeah. the, the stairs of the cathedral in Girona. It's usually uh, the biggest project, no? And yeah, sure. one of the most spectacular um, as well. Um, are there more uh, highlights we can mention about uh, Thames the Flows this year? Well, Something um, related maybe to the local football club? 
Yeah, sure. This year we are so happy with our football club. Uh, so in Plaza Catalunya, um, we'll, we will all be decorated with our colors. It's uh, white and red, and all will be involved with that, with that joy we are living with our football club. Carla, I know that apart from uh, floral um, projects, uh, Thames of Floss offers other activities, right? Uh, let's mention just a few of them. Yes, all, all cities involved, okay, all, all cities living this spirit. So restaurants are giving special menus um, where, for, of course, um, flowers are the protagonist. Also concerts and activities to leave, to leave the city at, at all, yeah. Okay, and as a member of the Association Amics de las Flos, Carla, what is exactly your role in this uh, event? Well, um, for me, it, it all began with my mother. So it's so important to say that this vinculation always comes from generation to generation. Yeah, like a okay. very close uh, relationship, right? Yes, yes. So uh, nowadays, I'm being, I try to be there with the, with the design of, the, of our space that we are, we are creating. And also the days we have to prepare it, I'm always there just because I love it. I really love Well, Carla, thank you so much for coming. Um, we really hope that Thames of Floss will uh, be again a great success this year. Good luck with the project and I uh, well, hope to um, talk to you soon. And maybe we, um, I meet you in Girona. Okay, And thank visit you. the flowers together. Okay, thank you. And after flowers, let's go back to music. Here is our last tips video. Some phrasal verbs by our American teacher Jan Nicholson from International House Barcelona. Here it is. Hi, I'm going to teach you some phrasal verbs about music and the devices we use to listen to music with. The first one is very easy, to turn up the volume. It means to increase the sound so you can hear it louder. Hey Mike, turn up the volume, that's my favorite song on the radio. If the music is so loud that you can't enjoy it, you can say the music is blaring out. They've been blaring out dreadful music on the radio all day. Turn it down. That means to lower the volume. Before you can do any of these things, you have to turn on your device or put on the music. If you don't like a song, you can jump ahead or skip to your favorite track. These are all things you do with music that is pre-recorded or that you listen to it on a device. But what about live music? When you go to a concert, the band has to tune up, which means to prepare their instruments so that they sound good. Once the instruments are tuned, the band can play along, which literally means they play together different instruments. If you know the lyrics, you can sing along too. Hopefully, the weather does not force the concert to get canceled or called off, and you can enjoy a great concert. Finally, I'll leave you with another expression, to drum into someone's head, which means to repeat something so many times that they can't forget. Like when we were kids, multiplication tables were drummed into our heads until we knew them by heart. It wasn't fun, but I know I'll never forget them. Bye. Should we pay for downloading music? This is one of the most controversial topics involving the music scene today. And fortunately, in our face-off, we have two opponents willing to defend yes and no, pros and cons. Matthew Tree reckons we should pay, but our other guest, Patricia Scalona, a freelance publisher from Barcelona, thinks that it's okay to download music for free. Welcome to the show. Uh, Patricia, welcome to the show, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, listen, um, let me start with, uh, with Patricia. It's quite shocking for me to uh, find out that a publisher like yourself is advocating for uh, free music. So, Patricia, don't you believe in musical rights? I do believe in musical rights and I do, I do believe um, the piracy. I don't believe in piracy. Let's put it that right. way. But I do believe that um, in a controlled uh, way, uh, downloading music for free can help out 
bands to be known and to be out there in a market that is immense and full of competence. So I think that, you know, we can, we can spin it that way. Uh, we cannot advocate for um, uh, people not buying stuff or not paying for um, stuff at all. But we, we can advocate for some bands deciding on their own volition to actually uh, put out their music there for free and, and why not offer it? Big bands have done that too. I see. Matthew, what do you think? Why shouldn't no, we I think people enjoy a, music for free? I think Patricia has a point. You can do that. But the problem with that is what happened, for example, when, on, when Apple decided to take the latest album of uh, U2 and give it away free to everyone who had a copy of iTunes. Now, uh, if you actually hate you two, if you think they really are one of the phoniest, worst bands on the planet, <laughs> to actually receive all this stuff for free is, is quite irritating. And No, uh, seriously though, my attitude is more comes from a long conversation with a, a Catalan musician and singer called Mickey Pooj, who explained to me the whole situation with musicians now. They don't make any money anymore out of selling CDs because the CD market, as we all know, has just uh, gone for a Burton, I think as they say in English. And so they can only make money by doing concerts and you don't make any money with concerts because it costs so much to organize a concert that they end up making a little bit of money on the merchandising, but they don't make very much money on the ticket sales. So the only thing they've got left is people paying to download music. And he said to me, I mean, I remember this, he sort of drummed it into me. He said, pay for your music because it's hard work. We do a lot of work to get this music out. It's a product like any other, you know, it's, uh, if, if you don't pay for it, it's a bit like you're, you're stealing, I don't know, for example, cosmetic creams um, like Cristina Cifuentes. You know, imagine yourself you being Cristina <laughs> Cifuentes when you're downloading music for free, something like that. Well, it's a good point. Music is culture. Should culture be free? Mm, culture should be made available for everybody um, in different terms. I don't think you two care that much about the fact that Apple gave away their album. They, they're, you know, rich enough already. Yeah, they're doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're fine with it. Um, and I do agree with you, it's quite annoying to receive that without, you know, having asked for it like one given day. But I do say like, I'm sure Mickey knows about all this much more than I do. But um, I also have musician friends who have told me that nowadays gigs mm -hmm. are their uh, main source of, of income. So. Maybe that's his case because, I don't know, the putting the production of the whole show might be a, more expensive or whatever, but other friends of mine who are like in smaller bands or are just like one person, um, they, they get their money from festivals mainly and they get their money from gigs and they also have branched out in other parts of the profession like production and stuff like that. So, Is that why we have so many festivals now in the yeah, country? They're a great source of income. There are more income. and more festivals, right? Yeah, they're so a great source of income. Not, I mean, the musicians are paid depending on their cachet and depending on how important they are. Uh, but they're a great way to be there and to be known by audiences that otherwise wouldn't have listened to them. Because at some point, in, I don't know, if, you go to festivals or you go to festivals often but what end up, ends up happening is that you just end up in a certain concert that you didn't know mm. about and that's how and then after that very probably people go and um, go to Spotify or buy their albums so it's well Patricia has some really good points today <laughs> Matthew, what do you think? Yes, well, as I always lose these arguments, <laughs> so I'm getting used to it. But Get used to it. Yeah. yeah. It's always going to happen <laughs> yeah, with no, me. Okay. Story as long of my as life. You don't fight. You can argue as much as you want, but please don't fight. But well, I, we'll I do think there's still some point in, like, even if you just pay a small amount, and in fact, with uh, platforms like Spotify, that can be the case. Uh, you, you can. Uh, download music for free but then you get these horrible advertisements breaking in all the time but if you pay just a little bit because I always get this feeling I mean I, I don't know but if I receive anything um, cultural per, you know like a book um, a piece of music and it, it's sort of given to me for free 
it's like a psychological thing. I don't attach as much importance to it as if I personally had paid even a nominal amount of money for it. I mean, if you go to iTunes, which is the platform I usually use, I pay what? I pay 99 cents to download a song that can be up to 10 minutes, for example. And I, I do it quite often, actually, partly because my partner is the one who pays for it. But <laughs> <laughs> if I have to be honest. But no, it's an agreement we have. You're stealing from her then? No, 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 it's I an agreement. Bit, it's, 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 it's the way we worked out the, the account. So basically, it's uh, also a matter of respect, right? Respect for culture. Just so. Just so, and I think anybody can afford their 99 cents for a, a piece of music that they really want to listen to. It's a um, cultural thing as well, because you don't get that much, um, you don't get that in Spain, or you don't get that in like certain countries. Um, and you do get that a lot in the States, in the UK. People still buy and download albums. I don't, I don't know anybody who does that here in Spain. A lot of people do really? pay, yeah. A lot of people do pay for um, Spotify or, other platforms or go to SoundCloud, which is a, mm. a for free platform as well. So you get a lot of for free music there, willingly put up by the artists, so they can just promote themselves. Um, but people have stopped uh, downloading um, albums and paying for them that way. So in a way, Spotify. I think I read an article at the Gar in the Guardian the other day that said that Spotify and other platforms like that have, have saved music that and gigs as well. And we, don't have, we have to remember that these platforms were made possible by a guy, who, the guy who founded Napster, which was, um, you know, an in, for free, completely yeah, yeah, I remember. interchange of, of music and other kind of documents. So it has, it does have a certain positive effect on the, on the industry, the fact that people can download music for free. Right, I think Patricia has um, a good point. Right. And actually, there are more and more uh, Catalan bands who um, upload their music for free. Do you think this is uh, just a trend or is the future? Well, if people are already downloading for free, which actually is piracy, um, and it's very common in, in Spain and uh, some other countries. But to give you an example of what happened with film, uh, there was a time here when everybody downloaded films for free because they, they used these BitTorrent and these other platforms. And it came to the point where the uh, distributors of, of the films in the United States and elsewhere just said to the Spanish government, if you don't put any controls on these downloads, you're not going to get to see the films. We're not going to distribute them in Spain at all. And the problem is now, uh, uh, well, as a publisher and writer, we both know, with books, it's become a huge problem, the, the piracy uh, problem has become so big because the Spanish government doesn't have, doesn't put any controls in place for, for um, downloading books for free. And the same thing is with music. That's one thing. And the other thing is the quality, that if you download from a, a paying platform like Spotify or, or iTunes or others, there are others, the quality tends to be better than if you're just downloading something for for free. Right, Matthew, uh, I must say that today I quite agree with you. Uh, actually, um, we need to stop here. It's a bit uh, difficult for me to decide today who is right and who's wrong mm -hmm. because I kind of agree with both of you. So, um, no winner today. Uh, Matthew, oh. thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> You're very welcome. You can't complain at least. No, no, time, I'm not right? complaining. No, no. Well, <laughs> thank you. I'm going you to celebrate. Week, <laughs> and thank, thank you, Patricia. Thanks for having See me. See you soon as well. Yeah. Well, this is it. We're about to end the show here. Just a few more words to remember, you can follow us on social networks on at the Weekly Mag TV. And our final quote is a thought by Ark Blakey, one of the greatest jazz drummers in history who led the Jazz Messengers Band. The Weekly Mag is coming back next week. Till then, try to keep your English up and running.